but I realized that as the company would grow, what would happen is we would grow and then my guys would come to me and say, hey, we need more marketing. So I'd go over and get more marketing and, you know, work it that way. And then they'd come to me and go, we're too busy. And so I'd like, oh, crap, crap, let's, let's bring more employees on. And so they'd come to me and go, we need more work. And so I'd go and get more marketing. And, and so we just kept working it that way because I wasn't in the space or working in my business. I was working on it. Hey, what's up to the point listeners? It's your boy, Chris. We're going to have a great episode today, but we're going to have a great episode without my co-host yet again, Mr. Chad Peterman, because he is picking up the kids from school. This is a late one that we're doing on the West Coast. So, you know, he's still three hours ahead. I'm ready for daylight savings to uh, this whole thing to fall back, you know, so that way the East Coast is only two hours ahead for us West Coasters. But it's an exciting episode. So I'm bummed he's missing it. And I know he wanted to be on here. And he had sent me some uh, some questions, you know, to to ask, and I literally avoided every single one that he had because I had even better ones. So I'm excited to you know to have our guest on today, Carrie Kelsch, and um, and we met. I think it was was this. I can't remember if it was like two years ago or was this last year. I cannot remember, and I won't I won't even say where, but I do. I remember meeting some of your team for the first time at Vertical Track. I believe it was like a couple of years ago. Is that right? They were there. Ooh, that was correct. Yeah. Here, in, actually, here in Phoenix. So that's where I met them, and then I believe I maybe I must. Uh, I think I met you the same year, and I I did, but I hadn't heard of you at that point in time. And then once I heard about your business, I was like, whoa! Like, what is this? Like, help me understand. So, so Carrie, for our listeners, is CEO and founder of A Plus Garage Doors, um, which is business. I think you started in '05. Is that right? 2005. That is correct. Yeah. Good grief, which is like a lifetime ago at this point. You're like almost 20 years into this business. Yeah, next year we get to celebrate it. That's that's a pretty cool milestone. So congratulations. That's pretty neat. And yeah. uh, for reference, they're up in Utah, up in, uh, uh, I think headquarters is in Sandy. So you're in the Salt Lake City market. Actually, you're all over. Like you're kind of spread out over Utah now. Yes, all over. And headquarters in West Valley. Yes. It's in West Valley. Okay. So, and this is, a, I mean, this is a nice little $35 million garage door business. Like, fantastic good for you and uh it, it mean uh it's a neat story like i said when i had first when i had first met you and i heard i was like oh wow like this is really intriguing and then uh you know you never got to spend you know a couple times together just kind of chat you know talking getting to know each other and so i thought the story was really cool and by the way if you're listening right now and you're not in garage doors um it doesn't matter it's because that's just what we're going to talk about is that was her business but all the things that we're going to talk through are related are relatable to every business that's in home services or home improvements. So I just am like genuinely curious. And I think that's kind of what makes some of these podcasts fun is, you know, I do usually do a lot of due diligence before these, but man, you're hard to find information on. <laughs> it's like, I can dig pretty deep and I'm like, why is it so difficult to find like information on, on you? So now we're going to just ask them on the air. Like we're just going to talk about it. Um, but I do think that there's a couple of things I want to say to the listeners right off the bat. Like, um, you know, you're, you're in this, you know, you're in Utah, you're not in every market in Utah, but you've kind of spread out cause you have some, like you're, you're kind of spread out a little bit over the state, oh, but, you, yeah. but you're not doing anything outside of the, the garage door business, right? You're not like, are you flirting with anything? I'm talking about when we're talking about a plus a plus is just in the garage door business, right? Yes. Just in the garage door business. Got it. So a lot of my listeners know, you know, my good friend, Tommy, you know who Tommy is. Um, and you know, so we always hear about Tommy's business and all the things about Tommy's business, but like, um, you know, $35 million business in the garage door business is like not, it, that's not the norm. That's the, the opposite of the norm. So you've done something very great and I'm excited to, you know, to talk about what you've done to get to that point. So, um, and the garage door business is, you know, is intriguing to me. Um, and, and you'll see in some of the questions I'm asking, but I want to say this right up front as a, uh, you know, as a guy who was raised by my, my mom, who's working like many, many jobs, like multiple jobs just to make, you know, make it work for me and my sister. Like I have the utmost respect for hardworking uh, women who support their families. And, and you, you know, had kids young. So like you had to figure things out fast yeah. and, and you didn't get to graduate, you know, graduate high school yet. Here you are who persevered and created something exceptional because like, as we were talking pre podcast, like there's a lot more stories of people who, who didn't make it they're like they just felt like it was over or maybe they didn't have good guidance and by the way if you're young like you only know how to deal with the situation how you've been taught to deal with the situation right um but you you know 
you, if you have drive, you got a little bit of hope, you know, and you have some will, you can go a long way. So, and I don't know this part of your story. Like I, like we just talked about this ahead of the podcast and, um, some parts interesting, but I respect it because you know, people are looking like, Oh my gosh, you didn't graduate, you know, high school. And like, especially we're talking like, okay, you started your business in 05, but you did some things in between that between, yeah. high, between high school and starting your business. So, um, like, I don't know how you got into garage doors and I'm not going to ask you to share all of, I'm just going to ask you to share what, what you want to on like, how did you, how did you get to a garage door business? Was that what the plan was? Is, was it just the opportunity? Like, how did you get to, to this place? Like in the garage door business? I definitely didn't go, Oh my gosh, I can't wait to be in the garage door space. I was <laughs> dating a guy. So I'm single mom dating a guy that worked in the garage door space and he kept begging me to open up a company. And I just, I just didn't want to be tied to anybody. And so I just kept telling him no. And then he's like, well, if you open a company, you'll own it, I'll manage it. And your kids could work there. So he really got me in the heart, you know, the mom heart. So I was like, oh, I do want a place my kids could work. And so I thought, oh, it'd just be a small little company. My kids can go work there when they get out of school and, you know, kind of get some good work ethic going on. And, and that worked. It was, it actually started working well that way, but I found that I was spending more and more time in the space. Like I was a mortgage broker. So after hours I would come home and I'd work in the garage door space, either depositing checks, working on, I don't know, marketing, you know, all the back end stuff, working on taxes, whatever it may be, entering invoices. And so after a while, it's just, it, it was around three years later that I found that 2008, the garage door or the garage door company was growing as my mortgage industry was crashing very fast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So my, here's another thing. Um, whomever that was, um, clearly was a good salesperson too. Yes, very good salesperson. <laughs> because they got you sold quickly mm -hmm. uh, and you came in. So let me just take a quick step back. So what I heard you say is, um, you kind of looked at it as like uh, a fan, like, family bit like the family yeah. can get and be and participate and that's something that was worth taking the time building for you because that's something that was obviously really mattered to you so yeah. you, and, and it would and it would give them direction on maybe something that you didn't have is that fair yeah okay great so um that's by the way like i've learned a lot of things i've been down like many coachings and trainings both emotionally and physically and i've learned that um you know, a lot of times you, from what you, you learn from your past experience and you want to give the opposite of those things to your, to your, your kids, you know, and be that. And I think that's great. Like, cause some people could just be like, yeah, I didn't have it either. You know, like and move on. Yeah. Uh, I love those conversations by the way. Like love those conversations. Um, but so, okay. You, you start in 2005, the business is the business a plus in 2005. So that's the name. That's the name. So no, I yeah, I named it A plus because, you know, again, I have kids and I was thinking, well, these moms that are staying at home that are wanting their doors fixed, they'll be calling somebody and I'll have a magnet sitting right on the fridge that says A plus and they'll be hanging their kids' paperwork on there. And so they'll call me. Got it. Okay. So yeah, it, was all, it was all around my kids. For yeah. Sure. I was gonna say like that, this, that's what it seems like it is. Well, and by the way, you know, it's, it was, you know, still. We're still phone book days then. So yeah, yeah know, we did have an A for sure. Pretty good spot. In the phone. Mom got stuck in that hole. Got to have an A. <laughs> That's right. The A space, A, A, A space yeah. <laughs> those yeah. days. Um, okay. So you didn't have this like burning passion being garage doors. And now here you, and now here you are. Right. So right. now you're in the business and you're working two jobs. You've got your, your mortgage job. So were you doing the mortgage thing? at the same time, or did you bring that on after just to supplement you know, like the, you know, your um, income because you're starting a new business? So I was doing mortgages first, very successful at it. And then I just let that die off as I started doing the garage doors more and more. Got it. So, um, because, so once the business started to become established, make a little bit more money, you could kind of wean yourself off of doing the mortgage stuff. Well, yeah. And of course the 2008 crash really helped me wean myself off. <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> I guess so. I don't mean to laugh at that. Listen, no. <laughs> always, there's always a lesson in yeah. every trial. Okay. That's right. Um, and that lesson was, uh, Gary, you're done. Focus yep. on a plus. Yep. So hey, listen, that was a blessing as well too, because, um, you know, you, well, one, 
today, you think about what you learned as, you know, as you're still young, as you were back then in like, you had to learn all these things, you know, it, it, which prepares you for, for growth in business because it takes you through hard times. Um, so I want to, I just want to focus on a couple things real quick. I'm going to, I'm really going to kind of hit on, on growth and some of the strategy behind, um, the growth that you've had and the things that you've learned. And I think that the, um, like the best way that our listeners uh, learn from this podcast is when we are like vulnerable, right? Because it's easy to go and pound your chest and I'm around enough people who do those things. <laughs> Tell me all the great things that they are and their businesses are. Um, and I also have some good friends who've had really successful businesses that talk to me about a lot of their failures. And um, those are the parts where I really connect with them. Like, cause I'm like, sweet, let's talk about that stuff because we've all been through a variation of it. And, and like people don't want to talk about it. That's like, everybody goes through that. Yeah. So, but you've built a, a great garage door business. So when, what I want to go to is you know, when, what were some of like the key, you know, like as you, well, actually let me take a step back before I even get to that question. You're, you're three years in now you're just focused on, on a plus yet roughly like what the size of this business was then, or, or even the, like the people in the business, I'm trying to get an idea of what the organization looked like and what the size of it was in 08. So I am um, that guy that convinced me to open the garage door company, the really good salesman also yep. convinced me to marry him. So I, by then have married this guy. He's now working in it full time also. Okay. And he needs some help. And so is always reaching out to my family. So uh, one of my first, well, my first employee was my sister-in-law, and then my second employee was my nephew, uh, at age 16, who has now worked his way up to the C COO, and he does such a fabulous job. I think a lot of people know Parker. Wait, who's, wait, who, oh, wait, yeah. who's your nephew? Parker. Parker. Oh, yes. <laughs> cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's he's so been, cool. Uh, he's been with us for such a long time, and he's he's really just earned every everywhere that he's gone. He's He's really earned it all. That's fantastic. So, okay. So first off, like people are listening and they're like, Hey, I've heard you don't bring family into this business. Well, guess right. what listeners, she started this thing with family in mind. And the first couple of people you bring on board are family members. Right. You know okay. what? You really want to watch that. People have asked me a lot. They're like, you know, what should I bring family on? Should I hire family? And I said, well, look at your family. Look at the culture in your family. Do you love the culture? Do you guys yell at each other? Do you love each other? What is it? If you love the culture, bring them on because you're going to love the culture. But if you don't like the culture of your family, do not bring them on. Yeah, that's great advice. And I think that, you know, and I have, we, I have family, my wife, is, you know, she's now the president over all of home services, but we started the business together, you know, mm -hmm. but we did have a fine line drew like to know, you know, and by the way, like, listen, when you have family in, sometimes you feel like, okay, I can treat them a little bit differently. They're, they're my family. You can't, yeah, you no. cannot do it. Like that is a slippery slope. Yep. You, you got to have like the line in the sand, but yep. you're right. Yeah. You have people that you could trust. Like I have, I've had plenty of people that are in my family who asked me to come work for me and I have to politely decline because I'm like, that's not who we are. Like, unfortunately, and I love you, but you're just, it, it does. I love this business, you know, and I have a lot of responsibility. Yeah. So, um, okay. So now you bring on your first couple of employees. Now what's your job then? So now you're, you know, now you're, you're bringing on people that you're responsible for. I'm sure you're probably still wearing multiple hats. Like what's like, what's yeah. your job? So, I mean, we're all wearing multiple hats at this time. So my husband's out there running the every single job and, and building relationships. And I'm in the back end doing all the, the office work. But I didn't really realize at this time that I had a company. I mean, I knew that the, the family was, you know, being sustained by this, but I didn't really realize I had a company to run. It wasn't until 2013 that I, I did some uh, college courses that I realized that, um, oh my gosh, I've got to run a company. Like somebody's got to lead this. So there's got to be, you know, some direction of where we're going. And so that was really huge in 2013. We had around, God, we were probably 1.5 million then in revenue. Okay. So it, it took a long time to get there, to get off that. Well, I think a lot of people can relate and it's like, you know, you can only sell so much at some point in time, you do have to run a, a business too. And you need all these things that come along with the business. Yeah. But like, it's not uncommon for it to slow roll for growth because you're kind of yeah. learning different things. And that first million is probably like, a lot of people here is like the heart, like that's your first hard moment is like yeah. getting that first million dollars. 
and yeah. I've seen it so many times from the one to the three to the five to the 10 to the 12, like, and it's all different stuff. There's all like, you're going to hit like, it's all hard, but it's just different kinds of hard. Yes, I would agree. There, there's definitely the different layers that you've got to kind of work through. And as you're elevating up, then you're like, oh, that doesn't work anymore. We've been doing it for years and it just doesn't work. And, and pretty soon your processes and systems that you thought you had are just all over the place and you're finding an invoice here or a check there. And you're just like, oh, now we've got to find a, some way to mitigate this. Yeah. Somebody to like keep an eye on these things, like, cause yeah. all these things matter. Yeah. So, so when did you guys start to see like your first significant bump in, in growth? And I'm not like downplaying your 1.5 million. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, in comparison to where you're at now, when did you, when did you feel like maybe some things are really starting to, to click? Like, cause 2013, you're 1.5. Uh, when did you see that like start to like start to happen? I would say right after I did that course, the good thing about not graduating is that you really know that you know nothing. And so I had no idea what I was doing. So when this this class opened up to me, when I went to it, I'm like, I don't know anything. So I was a sponge and absorbed everything. And then I came back and implemented as much as I could and it worked. So just going to this and implementing everything that I've learned and just like having clear intention to grow, that's when we started just seeing like 25 to 30% growth year over year over year. And we just kept going. Do, do, do you think one of your superpowers is that you implement quickly? Um, no. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say that like when, when you don't know what you're doing and you're just going to implement it now, we're a little bit slower to implement things. We kind of look at it and, and decide, but when you don't have anything to lose, then of course you're going to implement it really quickly. So I'd say at the very beginning, for sure, that was one of my superpowers is just implementing it. And it's easy. It's easy to kind of make changes when you're smaller, when you get really as big as we are now making a change, everybody kind of throws their hand up and runs around panicking. So, <laughs> well, you can rem you remember that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, you know, you, when, when you were in, when you were in school, were you a, were you a good student? Were you smart? Oh, I was a solid C student. Too. Okay. Okay. Same. I feel you. <laughs> but I had, I was There's something great. about the C students. I tell people, I'm like, you know what? They have to try so hard to be the C student. And once they get out of like school, then they're just try so hard because you're just used to failing all your life. So all you got is just to give it your all. And you're just hoping that you'll scratch the surface of something. Oh, for sure. So I'm going to date myself. I'm 45. I, um, uh, I remember my senior year, I had to have a B minus average to get the good student discount on my car insurance. So I tried so hard to get to a B minus average, but I also took, I was in choir. I was in PE. I was a student aide. I took the study hall. Mm -hmm. I took the easiest classes my senior year and I still landed at a B minus. My social game was on point. I was really good at social. Same for college. I did a great job socializing in college. Um, okay, so you start to see a little bit of, of of growth now. All this is happening, I'm assuming, in the in the uh, Salt Lake City market only, right? Like that's it. Yes. And I'm talking like Greater Salt Lake, you know, yes. metro. Area. Okay. Um, so now do you have? Uh, now do you get to? You I mean you've got you know. Back, you know, a few back-to-back -back years of 25, I think you said 25 to 35% growth. Um, you're starting to add bodies, right? And I'm sure that your husband is now also has other installers or technicians that are out there running these jobs too, right? Yeah. So this is a business. This is a real business now. Yeah. Do you remember when you break your 10 million mark? Oh, you know what? I don't exactly remember what year it was. So it had to be somewhere though in the, uh, I guess. Around 2016, I would say. Okay, cool. So like, all right, like that's feeling good. That's a, that's a solid little, yeah. that's a solid garage door business. It's still, still in Salt Lake City at the time, right? Still just in Salt Lake City. Yeah. When, when did you actually start to expand outside of Salt Lake City? Um, this year. Oh, really? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize it was that fast. <laughs> yeah. 19 years later. Yeah. Like, holy shit. I know. Uh, okay. So, so then let me just ask a couple of things. So, so when you, when you guys are, um, you know, now I'm like, this is, this is a, this is a, a business, like a real, you know, uh, like a, 
a good sized business where you really have to plan and prioritize and, ha- and come up with projections mm-hmm. and like all those things. And you got to bring people with you. Right. Um, you know, who are a part of the plan. And, and I've met some of your staff too, and they're very loyal. Um, and it seems like you very much include them in maybe not the ultimate decision making process, but in the process, you know. Um, and so, when you're growing this thing, um, how did you how did you identify and prioritize like growth opportunities in a market, especially a market as big as Salt Lake City, in a market as competitive as garage doors? Because I mean, there's a lot of garage door repair folks. That can be sole proprietors out there working, you know, just like technicians, or air conditioning technicians or electricians. But like mm-hmm. you have to some point in time, like start to prioritize this, this growth plan. So like what were some of those things that you identified as like, okay, these are the things we really need to start focusing on to grow this business. Right. You know what? I would love to make it sound like I had all the great ideas. As you know, you, well, as I know, I did not have all the great ideas. I would have an idea. And one of my first one was like, let's go into commercial. Like we're doing amazing in residential, let's take it into commercial. And so we started to do that. And we realized that we are so busy with residential that we're spinning our wheels with commercial, trying to figure it out when when we're over here just getting slammed with residential. So then we just kind of backed off on commercial. And so the growth really happened just naturally. It just like, and I, I think one of the big things with me is I, I thought it again was another weakness, just like, you know, me not graduating, I thought was a weakness. But what I, I was really frustrated that I've never been in the garage doors. I've never gone and installed or, or you know, I mean, I wound a spring, but literally that's about it. So I've never really done the work. And, and so I was really frustrated with that. But I realized that as the company would grow, what would happen is we would grow and then my guys would come to me and say, Hey, we need more marketing. So I'd go over and get more marketing and, you know, work it that way. And then they'd come to me and go, we're too busy. And so I'd like, oh, crap, crap, let's, let's bring more employees on. And so they'd come to me and go, we need more work. And so I would go and get more marketing. And, and so we just kept working it that way because I wasn't in the space or working in my business. I was working on it. And so I really could keep it growing because that's all I knew. That was my only gift. You know? So you, you're using the reactionary uh, marketing tactic. Yes. It is very much so. Yes. By the way, very common. Uh, very common. You know that that happens until you're like, okay, when do I actually put something in place for this? Some, you know, some yes. Put some balances in place. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so part of like, I, here's what here's what I've, I I know I've seen you know I work with any hour up there and they have mm-hmm. a very huge brand and I know a lot of their story and wide story and how they built the business and like they're super involved in the community and like in, as they were growing it. Mm-hmm. When, when, you know, and a lot of times for anybody that's listening to it, starting businesses or have smaller businesses, or even if you have big businesses, community involvement is super important. Very important. Um, so, you know, I'm assuming that that was a, that was a part of your, your plan or your we'll use your plans. Yeah. was, was community involvement, um, you know, to help build your, your brand. Cause then you can yeah. get the referrals, but that means you need to give exceptional customer service and yes. product, right. Um, how, how did that contribute to your growth? And I want the listeners to pay attention to this because you know, this is something that some people think like, like, what, what, what does it mean to be involved in my community? I go to the mm-hmm. church and my kid, like that's, you need to do a little bit more. Like if you're in a community, like that should be your first place that you should be like involved in that community. Like, especially in our types of businesses, these home services, businesses or home proven businesses. Oh, yeah. So well, you how want, do you in your you strategy? For sure, you want to be in everyone's like top of mind. You want to be their go-to. Um, I know that like you want to be in their phones, right? You want them to just not even look for you. Just oh, there's my garage door person, and and then somebody that your your parents you can send to their parents, or you can refer to your grandmother. And that was really always our focus. Is I would tell my staff, I'm like, look, we want to be the company that you would refer to your parents or that you'd refer to your grandparents because everyone's so protective of their grandparents. And so really that was our focus going forward is just taking care of those customers, but um, showing up in a way that they really, they really knew that they could trust us and they could send us to their loved ones. Um, But being part of the community, uh, again, my, my husband was amazing at this. He would just, he had a lot of free time where he wasn't working, running service. And so what he would do is he would just, put out like on Facebook and he would just be like, Hey, free service calls for anybody or a free lube and tune for anyone. And 
the first so many people I'll give, you know, I'll give you this. And he would, he was like booked, I don't know, 10, 12 a day. And, and he wouldn't sell him anything. He would go there and they'd be like, he would be like, he'd diagnose it and you need this, this, this. And, and they're like, well, take care of it. And he's like, no, nope, I'm just here to give you the free lube and tune. And he just built that rapport. And so that really helped build the community around us. So he was really definitely amazing at that going and doing that but then also when you you teach the guys and all of the technicians out there that their main purpose is to make sure and you know leave a good feeling with that customer and make sure that that customer would refer them to somebody else then their focus is really taking care of the customer and in taking care of them always doesn't mean let's put a band-aid fix on it that is not taking care of the customer right. like fix it right so the customer trusts that it's going to work in the middle of the night and they're not going to be like trying to get out of the house to because their wife's in labor and they can't because the door's broke like you're literally saving lives <laughs> yeah well listen yeah i think that's actually fantastic and, and, and you said a couple things like some people are listening to this thinking like why would he go and just do it for nothing when they were could have paid him well listen uh you are actually selling without selling in that moment you're one selling mm -hmm. yourself and the integrity and value of your business some people would argue and say well you know, what do you, you know, what's the value? Like, you know, are you going mm -hmm. in, what's, you know, what's the value on the service that you're offering? It, you're, you just played the long, the, the long game, but maybe their door to your point, Gary, doesn't have an issue, but now they're referring you because yeah. of the way you treated them. And this is a relationship business still. Yeah. Like, it is. Well, and you remember like his point of doing this was also his give back. Like I want to give back to my community. And so it wasn't a take and it wasn't, he wasn't thinking, oh, you're going to hire me in the future. He really just wanted to give back to the community and he had the free time to do it because we hired enough employees that he didn't have to be working every single day. I think and that's really important that you bring on your supporting team underneath you and to fill those places and those, those things that you do every day. Yeah. I mean, delegation is a big part of, of growth. Like you have to delegate to elevate for that term used before. And it's so true. People you trust, people you've coached, but as long as they kind of follow your core values, your business, like, you know, you yeah. can trust them to go do their thing and you support them. Um, you have to be able to do that to grow and scale. Now here's something that's always interesting to me about the garage door business. Um, and this probably applies to, you know, some other phases and uh, all the listeners that are right now to some of your businesses, but we're going to use gar garage doors for this one. Um, I can't remember if it was uh, one of the vertical tracks I was speaking at or a home service freedom or whatever, except I've been at a couple of them, but I remember showing, um, this, uh, clip, this video, you know, this, uh, TikTok clip of, you know, people running out, you know, like they try to run out of the garage door, you know, and then jump over the, you know, jump over Sensors. the, yeah, the sensor to not close the door. And then they smack their head <laughs> on the garage door and they fall down. Um, it's always funny because then they dent the garage door, <laughs> there's a garage door repair job. Um, by the way, that's a good, that's a funny one to use for uh, garage door repair. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, think about this. Um, I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to tell you a, a true story to apply to this story. <clears throat> and I promise you, I'm telling you the truth based on what I know. So I'm backing out of the garage door. The garage door is open. I'm backing out to go to work. I've got a gate on my house, right? And a garage door. And they're both run off of, I think it's my queue. I think that's mm -hmm. what the, my app is. Um, and uh, so garage door is open and I hit the, the gate button to open the gate to, so I'm, as I'm backing out of the garage door, um, I got to go out of the garage door and then go through the gate. I'm backing out. So I back out, garage door closes on me. I swear I hit the gate button. Okay. The gate button is what I press, but for whatever reason, garage door closes on me. And now the garage door is crumpled out and it won't close. I can't get out. I've got a board meeting. I have to be at in 30 minutes. I'm already running late. This is when panic sets in. Okay. Cause now you're like, oh my gosh, my house is exposed. It's open. The garage door, I can't get out. Like there's so many problems in that moment. So this is where I'm headed with that. This is a very common, a common service call for you. Oh. Uh, service call. And this is the one where I love to challenge. Like, you know, if I'm talking to Tommy about this is I, I, how much do you think brand equity brand matters in that moment. What's the most important thing in that moment for that type of an emergency call? Yeah. I, I'm going to give you my two answers and you tell me if I'm on, I'm off, or if I'm kind of right. Fair? Fair. Okay. So I think 
could it give you if you have good brand equity you got your sticker on the on the door or inside the door or whatever it is and they call you first um yes i think there's value in having that brand equity but what i think matters more is the speed to the lead the speed to the home like and and like i needed somebody there now as fast mm -hmm. as they could get there and that wasn't the sticker on my door yeah and so to me brand equity was out the window it was like who can get to me the fastest and get this thing done don't even care what it costs like just come on come and get this thing squared away yeah. which one of those to, to you is like what you think is the most important in that moment speed <laughs> definitely the speed yeah i, I don't like it, it, it i've i thought about i'm like this can't just be me like it's yeah. a behavior it's a human behavior so to me at that moment, brand was out the window. Like if it happened to be the, the one I thought of or the one that did my work, great. But if they can't get to me, I'm moving straight on to the next person to get it done. Yeah. I don't know how you overcome that. You know, it's definitely hard to overcome. I don't know if you ever do really overcome it completely just because like I, I would always tell people, I'm like, nobody cares the name of your company. And that is true to a, to a point. But what happens is when they are searching for you and they, they do their little Google search and then they see you pop up there and they're like, oh, I'm comfortable with that one. And their eyes are drawn to it because it's familiar and comfortable to them. They don't know your name. I mean, my own family still calls my company. Don't tell Tommy I said this. They still call me A1. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, you guys have known me forever, which at first it didn't really bug me. But now that, you know, I'm right there, like, I'm like, look at your, call me A1. <laughs> you yeah. know? But really, they don't care the name of your company. They just care that they feel comfortable knowing that they're going to be taken care of quickly, efficiently, whatever that is. Got it. So, okay. So I'm going to, um, I want to thank you for uh, reassuring me that I, I am correct. <laughs> I feel like speed to lead is the most important thing. Um, so the, uh, the, I want to move on, like, let's, let's get into the COVID years. Okay? okay. So in the home services space, home improvement space, once everybody was done freaking out, um, bi our business has really shot up. Like we had a nice up and to the right. Um, and especially as people were home, like, and they couldn't travel, they're spending money on home improvements and things like this or whatever. I'm, I'm assuming you experienced some of the same things in your business. Is that, is that right? That is correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, um, and then the, you know, 23, 23 hits and even now into work, you know, gosh, it's gonna be September here shortly. Actually, by the time this airs, it is September. So it's like, we're, you know, three quarters away through 24 already, but business is not so much order taking, because there's a lot of order taking happening at that moment. Now yeah. we got to get back to running our business, but a lot of seen some businesses scale because of those easy sales. And now we're like, Ooh. Oh, like I got to start paying attention again to the blocking and tackling and things like that. So one of the questions I want I, did one is, did you, is that kind of what your guys' experience has been a day plus? Yeah, we definitely had the same experience. Okay. And and has this year been kind of more up flat, like the same, like how, how has this year gone? It, it's definitely flat. Okay. So, uh, which, uh, which is what I've, I've heard quite a bit. So it kind of helps you to reset a little bit. To yeah, say, you, okay. you get creative for sure. Yeah. Now you have to go back and like start looking at all the things again and like, um, and like, it's just, this is part of, part of business. And then you will be like, but now this is the moment, like it caused mm -hmm. you to go back and like double check those things. Um, so what I, what I wonder is, you, you know, when you're, when you're growing and then you start to go flat, like you got to balance your workforce and, and, uh, like your, your, uh, finances and you still got to make sure like, am I still spending money on marketing? Am I not spending money on marketing? Marketing is even more expensive. Um, you know, and still, still have to give high quality service. Yeah. Like, you know, and now there's like, you know, you know, do you, do you have rec like recruiting issues? And you're like, well, no, cause now I'm just trying to like keep people busy. Like the people that I already have, um, which is a whole other, you know, a whole other thing. Um, but like, you know, so like, what are you doing to balance, like to balance that? Because, you know, when it gets challenging right now, is it, are, are you guys of the mindset of like, Hey, we got to go and find the work at, at whatever the cost is going to be to keep our staff busy. Do we need to right size? A lot of right sizing happening in 2024, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, but like, what's your take on like the, like this whole current state of the market with the, like from you having experienced that growth to, you know, kind of being more, you know, flat now, and by the way, just so listeners are paying attention when you have a lot of growth and you're flat. It's still not a bad thing. Like, 
that's not a bad thing. It just means like you grew a ton and now you're just starting to level out. Like yeah. not a bad thing. Well, and I, I think a lot of it depends on why are you flat? Like for us, um, our LSA went down and we were struggling to get it to come back up. And so that was 35% of our business. And so when that goes, that goes down and we're still flat, we know we're winning. And so it just depends on why you're flat. Now that our LSA is up, back up, then we're just back up and we're, you know, we're selling through these last couple of months. So I know that we won't be flat at the end of the year, but you definitely, when, when that does happen, you take a step back and you look at it and go like, what, what way do you want to go? Do you want to start, you know, cutting your dollars and, and tightening up everything? Or do you want to like, just throw money at the, you know, and see what sticks? Well, you're just going to have to throw money at it and see what sticks. Or if, if not, you know, you're just, you're stuck and you don't have any business. So. Yeah. So, so did you have to do like any pricing uh, increase or anything like that? We didn't, we didn't have to really do any major pricing increases. I mean, it's not really a good idea when <laughs> you're struggling anyway to throw new pricing increases at your guys and at, you know, the market. I would say we definitely restructured and we pulled together and, and decided like what we need to to do to become to start going up. And and we tried a couple of things that didn't work and you back it off and then you you keep going in the direction. Most of it, like if you're gonna do a price increase, then we would look at going like what is the competition doing and and moving things up that way. I think it's not really it's not always just do a massive pie price increase when your numbers start or when you're flat. I just don't feel like that's the solution, but, but we might, we did small price increases with everyone else over 2023 and 2023. We, we were doing price increases. So on 2024, we were, we just felt like we didn't need to do any huge price increases. We just need to get really good at what we are doing. And we kind of stepped back and went, okay, we do garage doors what made us great in the very beginning and it's really customer service and doing great work and really connecting with the customer so we really stepped back and said how can we do this better and i think that really helped us get to the next level and just to keep that flat which is really in my eyes even though it's flat it was still a 23 percent growth because we've just lost lsa so um, yeah. but now you're you know you just keep going with the what what's working and dropping off what's not working I, I don't know we definitely tightened up our belt more on like some of the marketing things that weren't working and then we've been trying new things so 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 but you guys you guys got hit with all the inflation stuff too right like and, and, and supply and demand like all that stuff yeah so it's not unreasonable i think to you know i mean and maybe because what you're saying is you maybe covered you you covered that in 22 23 and you felt like that ah. Like maybe like, I feel like we're going to be like, we've done enough and you don't want to raise it again. Like, is that good? But you like, are you still experiencing any of that stuff now? Or is it kind of like fizzled out a little bit? No, it's kind of fizzled out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that like, we definitely raised our prices quite a bit just to keep up with inflation. Right. Um, we just, I don't know. I feel like when you're struggling, a lot of people will pull away and go, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going down, I'm losing revenue. So I'm going to pull away and not, not put so much in advertising and tighten it up that way, or they're going to raise their prices. And I think some of those big moves might get scary to people, like, especially to your employees that are out there working. And so I think you just keeping a level head and making very, I don't know, executed judgment you, on what needs to be done. Do you, do you guys have a, um, I'm assuming the answer to me yes, but do you guys have a really good culture? Like, like everybody's bought into the culture. Uh, yes. I mean, okay. I would definitely say yes. Okay, kind of got that vibe a little bit too. Um, and you know, and and I, I mean, I'll have asked that question, but like, it's and, and a lot of owners are like, yeah, of course you have a good culture. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> everyone's gonna say that they've got a great culture. But like, you know, like, cause you can start to hear rumblings from people, like, you know, if like, eh, like maybe we don't, but you know, um, and listen, like, you can't make you cannot make everybody in the business happy. Like that would just it just can't happen. Somebody's not gonna like a decision that you that you yeah. make. For sure. Uh, but overall, you like you know, if like everybody's kind of rowing the boat in the same direction. Yeah, I feel like they definitely are. Um, so, so let me, let me talk about this. Um, 
because I don't want to just skip over, you know, some of like the challenging things, because again, we all go through it. And like I told you, like, I love being able to share that. And so like, it's not like this has been all, you know, sunshine, you know, rainbows and flowers and all this stuff. Like you run into some challenges, like whether it be operational challenges or people challenges or financial challenges or like, and financial challenges, by the way, doesn't mean your business is failing. Okay. So people want to hear like, like what, like what sort of challenges did you come across in this business where you're like, Oh, like this was a real problem that we had to really think about to overcome, to move the business, you know, forward to us, for, for us to keep growing. Is there anything like that off the top of your head? Where you're like, Oh yeah. Like I can tell you, I know like this one and this one, or these are the things are like, this is the one thing that stands out to me that we ran into. We really had to think through to help grow our business. Do you, does something like that pop, you know, pop up the top of your head when I ask that question? Um, yeah, there's, there's always the challenge of, of letting go of those people that are not the culture fit. And, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's my top salesperson or, or it's my family member that I love so much. And, and you just, and making those hard decisions. I mean, that one definitely comes to mind. You, okay, listeners, t two critical things that you just said. Let go of your top salesperson and a family member. These are two separate scenarios, okay? Yeah. And, and, and with two separate pressures. Right. Yeah. But, but what you just said about letting go of your top salesperson because of a culture fit, that's a boss move right there because you are thinking about the business and everybody else in the business and, and, and a toxic person, regardless, yeah. I'm say, I don't know anything about this person, but whatever <laughs> happened, but you don't remove your top per salesperson for no, for no, no reason. No, you don't. So, you know, like maybe, you know, like how, that sets in, that sets a, a precedence, I think, for the rest of, of your staff to show like, hey, no matter how good of an employee you are, if you don't follow these standards for us or X, Y, Z, like you, you, don't have a, you don't have a place here. And not that you gotta be rude or like to the person yeah. leaving, you just don't, it's just not a fit anymore. Like, yeah. how does that go down? Like, how did that go down? Like, it's yeah. hard to get your, 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 hot, your best salesperson. Well, you, you know, you would always think that this is this isn't going to go well maybe the whole company is going to be upset at me because we're doing this but actually it's the exact opposite all the other employees come up and then they thank you for having their back they're like thank you so much for protecting us from this you know bad apple or rotten apple yep. and and i'm blown away because i was like wow like i didn't realize that doing that meant so much to them and so it it really you get kind of an opposite effect when you, when you make these moves. Yeah. So, so it has a, it has a bigger impact on the company overall. And, and what most people are thinking about when they hear this is like, oh my God, like I couldn't afford to get rid of my number one, my yeah. best salesperson. It's because we're looking at it from the wrong perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and you never know, like behind the scenes, what's happening. And if yeah. you start noticing people, you know, leaving or complaining and now you're creating this toxic environment that's what you can't have in your business that is true so that that's why i say that's a boss decision because like that you know that that is a class act move yeah um and, and so what i'm curious to know is in your you know if you have a, a best salesperson you have a second best salesperson so that's i'm true. wondering how the second best salesperson steps up to that challenge if you have like a conversation with them at all or like how that goes you know you normally you don't even have to have the conversation with them they just, just naturally step up just because they're like you said, one of two things. So they're, they're so grateful that you just got rid of whatever was toxic or they're like, Oh, I better straighten up because I could be on, you know, on the chopping block. So it just goes either way. And there's really an easy way for us with, with my executive team that we would, we would come to these decisions. And it's, it's the simplest question that you ask. And so you would go and you'd say, I, this is what I would always do. I'd go to my executive team and I would say, all right, if this person quit, would we hire them back? And they would sit there and be like, well, no, if they quit, we're not going to hire them back. I'm like, then fire them. Yeah. Like right there. That just draws the line. If, if they quit, would you hire them back? I mean, that's a pretty easy question to ask, yeah. but, but sometimes a difficult decision to yeah. make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think somebody goes, I think everybody goes through that at some point in their business. Yeah. Like this, I, I kind of came up in the sales world and, um, I think that I for sure went through that phase early, early in my sales career, in my, in my like early twenties where I was really good at talking to people. Like I said, I was, I, ex, I got a pluses in social, like, you know, in my social life in school, like I was great at that. 
Um, and I've always cared about like people. So I'm an empathetic guy and I've always had that. Um, and maybe it's cause I was raised by my mom. I don't know. I got sisters. I got raised by my mom. Uh, I've got all girls now, by the way, one boy. So I'm like three girls, one boy. And my son is just like me when I was his age. So at least I know what I'm dealing with, but, but we're very confident, you know, very confident, very social. And, and, but I got really good at sales because I was really good at, at talking to people because I it was what, what I thought I was selling to, to them was what I thought that actually would help them with whatever it was. And so, and I really cared. Like, so it made me naturally a good salesperson, but where I think it happens is I started to get an ego. Mm-hmm. Now I'm young. I come from nothing and now I'm starting to make some money and I'm thinking, ah, like, like now let me show you, like, I didn't have much. I do now. And I got arrogant and I started to be somebody I'm not. And then I become toxic, you know? Yeah. So I had to like self-evaluate and be like, man, I am, I, <laughs> I am not like, this is not who I want to be, you know? Right. Um, and that happens, right? So it's like sometimes, you know, when you get some young, hungry salespeople too, and I'm not sure anything about this person, but like we go through phases of it, like if like, hey, okay, I need to be like brought back down to, you know, mm-hmm. like reality, I'll get my head out of the clouds and get back in the, in the game and be a good human being and have some integrity. Um, but that's somebody you might say, listen, yeah, like, okay, you're coachable. Like you made yeah. a mistake. we'll bring you back down. And yes, I would re I would rehire you because you're coachable. Yeah. Some people though, you just know, or like they, like they're gone. Like they're not coaching. Right. So, so is that kind of, but that's kind of what you're saying. Like, is like, yeah, like, you know, who is and who isn't rehirable and you know, who's worth, you know, spending the time on to coach and and, and who's not based on their, like based on their, their past, you know, your past, your past experience with them. Right. You definitely can tell if someone's willing to be coached and, and kind of when you, when you bring them in and talk to them and and it's not one of these decisions that you make like overnight, like, Oh, one action and I'm going to let them go unless that action is like, you know, really (laughs) a really horrible decision. But for the most part, I mean, it's going to be one of these things that you work with and you work with and you work with, I mean, it's your top, if it's your top guy, you're, you're going to work with them quite a bit before you're, you're just fed up and you're just like, yeah, they are not able to learn this or they're not coachable. Do, do you guys do like, um, do you guys do like team builder, like team builder events and things like that? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys do community service? Um, we've done quite a few community service things like, you know, gathering together to go and install a garage door. Or we just did like a golfing event. Like we sponsored it for some Ethiopians. And so it was just like a little things that we, we can do that, the team can really, you know, rally behind. And yeah. and a lot of times my employees will bring me stuff and I love that when they'll bring it to you and they're like, Hey, this is a great cause. Can we jump behind this? Yeah, man. There's some like to me, I think I told you this before. I know most of our listeners know who know me, but um, you know, at, at Rhino, the one of the, our giving back is one of our our foundational like core values. Mm-hmm. Um, and genuinely care. Like these are two things that mean uh, a lot to me and Anna, my wife. So we still, we still do community service one day, every single month we've done it. Like I said, we're 16 years in mm-hmm. one day, every single month, you know, we pick, we're, we pick a Friday and everybody goes and does community service somewhere ever. And we pay them, we pay them to go do community service. But when you get to, you know, and some, we have a lot of remote employees too. We, we also have a lot, you know, that are together. And people, so I, I think there's a lot to be said about building culture and going and doing community service together that doesn't benefit you directly or the business directly because yeah. you're building a different bond with yeah. somebody giving back to something greater. And, and you might look at it as like, well, Chris, that's a, t- that's a ton of money to be spending for, you know, th- these are half days. It's four hours, right? Like they work four hours on Fridays. So I'm all about it, like keeping that culture going because I see the reward of spending that money and watching them build those relationships and become closer because as a business grows and scales, you need everybody to kind of, to be helpful and follow on you know, the other core values and, you know, and being cheerleaders because your leaders can only do so much for you. Right. I'm a big believer in, in giving back together to create, you know, to help culture. Yeah, I love it. I think it definitely bonds them. One of my favorite moments was uh, when... And it was definitely certain employees triggered more than others, but when an employee will jump on and they'll just start like on our group chat with our whole company and say, Hey, I'm going to take care of this customer. They're like, they're, I don't know, in this situation, I think they were handicapped and they, they were going like his wife had cancer and, 
they just lost, you know, somebody in their life. And so he's like, you know what, I'm going to just get them a new door. Does anybody want to pitch in? And it was, it probably was within 15 minutes, everything was paid for. And then people were like, Hey, I want to donate my time. I want to donate my time. And I, it just, it warmed your heart when they do that. And it's unsolicited. It's not me driving it. It's all the employees driving it. It's, it's amazing. Listeners giving back is cool. <laughs> I'm going to trademark that giving back is cool. Uh, and it makes you feel good. It does. Like it makes you feel good. I mean, I love doing those things and I let my kids get to do it with us, which is super cool. You know, um, cause you know, you can, you know, they didn't earn, my kids are not growing up the same way I grew up. <laughs> they understand that they live a privileged life, but they're very humble kids. We do. We've been very intentional about making sure that they understand like that we have a, a privilege and that a privilege can be taken away. Um, and that mom and dad are under privilege, not them. <laughs> But okay, yes. <laughs> um, you know, but hey, they also got to watch us build this thing, right? Like, you yeah. know, same thing with you. Like, and so there's a lot of like, you know, that was that's how we showed up for them and leadership, and they see those things, and we see a lot of that stuff kind of developing in them. I got four. I said I got my daughter. I got to see her yesterday, which is awesome because she's uh, she's in the military. She's um, going in for uh, intelligence. She wants to be in the CIA, so she's in a full mm -hmm. Russian immersion program right now with the Air Force. So it's good to see her yesterday. She's 24. I got a 17 year old girl who's a senior in high school, 13 year old boy who's in eighth grade. And then I got a nine year old girl who's in fourth grade. She oh. hasn't quite figured out all the things yet, but no. the rest of them are like on the right track, but she's the one that challenges us a little bit. Yeah. You know what but, I love that you can, you can incorporate them in, in what you guys do and that they, they were able to watch you grow the business. One of my favorite pictures is, I've got a picture of like, I'm up there unloading the springs and I've got three of my kids because I've also had four, three of my kids were helping me unload this and stack them in the, you know, in our warehouse. And it's just, it's amazing. It's exactly what I wanted when I envisioned it. Yeah. Right from the start when you said like, mm -hmm. Hey, this is what got sold you into getting into the business in the first place. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's like, Hey, there comes full circle. Yeah. Okay. So, so then I'm going to close this thing out because I think that's like the perfect segue is, you know, we're almost like almost an hour into this thing already, Carrie. <laughs> um, so, so one, um, I didn't realize you had four kids. I would have asked more questions on how you grow and scale the business and still manage the family. Cause that's a whole other, that's a whole other piece of this. Cause it, you know, it's hard to not like, it's hard to not miss stuff when you're growing and building a business, but you try really hard to not miss things. And again, that's like a whole episode on its own. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to talk about how we just, you know, we just kind of saw that thing come full circle with that picture you're talking about. And again, you guys are a $35 million business. You know, I probably have plans to keep, to keep growing this thing. Um, so as you look ahead, what are the next big goals for the company? And like, like the, that you have like, you know, uh, if you've identified what those are and maybe it's not just revenue, maybe it's something else. I don't know. It could be adding another cert. Maybe it's adding a location, but what are the next big goals, but what are the challenges that you think that like, that you can kind of see like, Hey, these might be the challenges that we're going to run into because by now you've got some of that gut instinct that comes from being in business and being around it to see some of those things. Yeah. What are, what are, what are some of those things for you? What are some of the big goals that you have and what are some of the challenges you see coming uh, ahead? Well, the big goal is obviously to grow it, but, um, what we're seeing going ahead and we're super excited about this is we're excited to join the guild group and just become part of that and the challenges there i mean it's it's so exciting our whole team is very excited about it but the challenge is going to be getting other companies and finding the best in best in class and just finding out like what's going to make the very best garage door company service service industry work and then taking that and implementing it over in this company and implementing it over in this company and just watching them all grow. To me, that is going to be so exciting. I had no idea that you were a part of that. Well, we will be soon. Oh You're my God. <laughs> this is the official announcement. Uh, there will be an official announcement. Well, um, do you not understand how many people are going to hear this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had no idea. Congratulations. I had no idea. Yeah. So yeah. Jeff, Jeff Sanford's in there, man. I have Jeff, a customer of mine for a long time and yeah. a buddy of mine too. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff was out here. He's great. Very cool. Great. Him, Tiffany, his family, they're out there in Indiana. That's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, great, great family. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. You're going to lead the charge in that bad boy. 
oh, you know, I've got a lot of very brilliant people right there leading the charge like Jeff. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But, you know, I, you don't see, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, like, um, I kind of, I understand what, what that, what, what you guys are, are doing. And I've seen some of that happening in the roofing, in the roofing business, because I end that business too. And it's, we're doing a similar thing there. Um, but that becomes fun, man, because now you're kind of yeah. going to like, and like now you got your team and you're kind of going, you know, now you got some all-star players, right. And you get yeah. to kind of go and do things together and like everybody can fill each other's gaps with different, you know, and gaps in the business or the knowledge or whatever. And, and it's, it makes it even more fun when you can do it with people you enjoy doing it with. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I definitely enjoy hanging out with all those guys. It's, it's crazy because, you know, you, you get around and that's where I'm comfortable at. I'm comfortable just talking about business and, and talking about like what you can do to strategize to get it to grow or where can you market or did this thing work? Or it's just, to me, that's fun, nerdy stuff I'm into. <laughs> It seems like in like, okay, so I'm going to try and sum this whole thing up for, for our listeners, you know, regardless of what business you're in, we're talking about Carrie's business right now. And, uh, the, a lot of what you had did, you've done was one, like you, you wanted to create something meaningful. You wanted to make sure you had great customer service. You were willing to go and learn the things that you didn't know. You were willing to come back and try the things, mm -hmm. right? And then you were, you know, when you came across, uh, you know, growing the team and scaling the team, you made sure that you had the right people in there. You had a good culture. And if somebody was toxic, you made sure that you took care of that like a good leader should so people can watch how mm -hmm. you treat people and they can say, because you basically are teaching them something, but just by making that decision and that something is like, I can continue to respect and trust our leadership that they are honoring our culture of our business. Yeah. It grows and scales and you built a great business and now you've joined a group and yeah. And that group is going to have a successful end to that group at some point, or I should say a next phase to that group. So <laughs> congratulations, because that's a big deal. Yeah. And yeah. and it's a little different than like my deal, because I, I I brought on a private equity partner last year in April and and to run our growth plan, and they've done exactly what they said they would do. And now I'm, I'm a year and a half into it now. And it's been fun. Cause now I got people smarter than me helping me understand how to run this thing and build the things faster, better, smarter. And like yeah. a lot of value a lot of value in that. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what we're so excited to do. I mean, we know that we don't know everything we've got, we've got a lot of things figured out, but there's always a better way. There's always, there's always someone that, that that's figured that you could do this or tweak this. I mean, just call just having a couple of these guys come and visit me and they're, they're just giving me their ideas and we're already like starting to implement them and we're just seeing amazing results. We're, we're pretty stoked about it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. So, uh, to kind of watch, you know, the, the story go on, you know, and look at the future and, um, wow, like didn't know that pretty cool. Well, um, well congratulations. You're first, right? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, so one, uh, thanks for giving me an hour, you know, uh, of your time mm -hmm. and for our listeners giving us an hour of your time and kind of just talking to the business, you know, and, and to the listeners, I just want you to kind of hear, this is a really cool story of just like, did it like, not like you got some like leg up to get this thing rolling, you know, mm -hmm. had a, had a, had a baby at 16, you know, didn't make it through uh, high school. Like listener, you got no excuse. Yeah. It's just a little bit of will effort, you know, and, you know, to, to want and finding a purpose, man. And your purpose was your family. Yeah. Like, and that purpose could really drive you. Really yeah, drive you. definitely drives you. I, I think finding the why is so important. Yeah. And, and by the way, sometimes that's very difficult pe to people understand it because they kind of look at it as cliche, but that's so true. Your why, your purpose, whatever it is, figure it out. And it's got to be something that's real enough to actually force you to make the hard decisions and do yeah. the hard work. So, yeah. well, Carrie, I appreciate you coming on here. Did you have fun? I did. Thank you so much. Well, I'm excited to be able to share to share your story. So thank you for for sharing it. And to our to our listeners, you know, again, like this is a perfect example of like you can do just about anything that you want as long as you got the will, you know. And if like we kind of tag this thing with the purpose or your why at the end. By the way, if you if you struggle with that, let me just share with you. And you're in business. There's this one simple 15 minute video that changed everything for me. That made me think about my why first in business and and really propelled us. And that was Simon Sinek's Start with Why. Um, he has a book that's called that, but he, but if you have uh, ADHD like me and it's hard to read a book or listen to an audio book, I could watch the 15 minute video and I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. How do you lead with why? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you mm -hmm. do it. Is that right, Carrie? That's absolutely true. That's right. So listeners, 
I don't know what you're going to do. You got to do something, but you can't do everything. I don't know what it is. You know, sometimes you just got to figure out what is it that I, what is it that I need to do. But no matter what it is, do something. No zero days.